Thank you very much. I'd like to call to order the special council meeting of Tuesday, September 29th at 5 p.m. As always, we are pleased to be here today on the traditional territory of Treaty 6. We acknowledge all those who share a deep connection with this land. The city of Beaumont respects the histories, languages, and cultures of all of Canada's First Peoples, whether they be of First Nation, Métis, or Inuit descent, and appreciates that their presence continues to enrich Canada's vibrant communities. We are all treaty people. As always with special agendas or special meetings, we're only here to consider the, the, the items that are on the agenda. So therefore I would ask a member of council to move adoption of the agenda this evening. Councillor Stout. So I move to worship. Thank you very much. All in favor? Councillor, oh, there we go. That carries unanimously. Which brings us immediately to business item 3A, Municipal Stimulus Program. Mr. DeBlanco. Good evening, Your Worship and the rest of council. My name is Curtis DeBlanco. I'm the Director of Finance and I'm before you tonight with a report on the Municipal Stimulus Program. So on July 28th, the provincial government announced components of the Municipal Stimulus Program or MSP as part of Alberta's recovery plan for COVID-19. Within this program, the City of Beaumont may access up to $2.3 million approximately in capital, capital stimulus funding. The report outlines the program guidelines and objectives as well as potential projects City Administration has considered. Uh, an important piece of this is that each uh, project that would be approved would need to meet the program objectives outlined by the Municipal Stimulus Program guidelines, uh, four of which are outlined below, which are su to sustain and create local jobs, enhance provincial competitiveness and productivity, position communities to participate in future economic growth, and reduce municipal red tape to promote job creating private sector investment. Other eligibility and conditions uh, mainly are that the project must not result in uh, extra operating costs in the result of municipal tax increases. And the project selected would not have gone forward but for this funding in either 2020 or 21. Um, an additional consideration is that uh, the city must also commit to submitting a red tape reduction report for both 2020 and 2021 indicating how they have made progress in reducing red tape. Uh, important to consider with that is the reduction of red tape is evaluated for the municipality as a whole and not necessarily required to be explicitly tied to the project submitted. In terms of eligible projects and some examples of projects that may be considered ineligible were as stated before, projects that would have likely gone forward in 2020 or 2021 meaning projects that had budget already allocated towards them or that existed in the five-year capital plan. Also projects that would result in municipal tax increases. An example of that would be a growth project that would require additional operating resources to service and maintain. Uh, project evaluation, earlier in the year, city administration filed a list of unfunded shovel ready projects to submit to the pro province in anticipation of provincial stimulus funding. Admin used this as a starting point to determine projects that meet the strategic priorities of council and that align to the MSP's objectives and eligibility criteria. Following the guiding principles for the city's budget process, the funding of renewal capital projects was deemed a higher priority than funding growth capital projects. Admin considered numerous projects to determine the best use of funds available within the established criteria of the program objectives. From this, administration has determined that the refurbishment of the Ken Nickel Recreation, Regional Recreation Center best aligns with each of the stakeholders' objectives. There is a capital profile attached as attachment three. Some high-level points on this project is that it will address emerging deferred maintenance items, improving energy efficiency, improving comfort for users, and a safer work environment for the maintenance personnel working with, within the building. The overall scope of revitalization of this project is to replace aged out components and provide upgrades, upgrades that realize energy savings and invest, address accessibility. Specifics are listed below, but at a high level they include retrofitting lighting fixtures to LED, 
replacing boiler systems for the ice plants within the, the building and installing security systems within the facility. This project explicitly meets the eligible uh, capital project activity criteria as uh, it comprises a rehab and non-routine maintenance of a recreation and sports facility. The next steps would be for admin to submit an application to municipal affairs to obtain the MSP funding approval for this project. Uh, budget and financial impact of this will be, if it's successful, uh, another report will come to council seeking budget approval for this amount and an adjustment to the 2020 capital budget. Also of note is that approval of this will result in a approximate 5% reduction in natural gas and electricity costs for the facility. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really do appreciate uh, the comprehensive report and the thought that went into this. Um, open it up to questions from members of council. Councilor Hendricks. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, just uh, a few questions on the Ken Nickel uh, retrofit. Um, some so many years ago, we did a complete study on the envelope, and I appreciate what's happening with the roof currently, but there was also going to be potentially a, a polypa system around the perimeter of the split face block. I think they did some cores into the block and found that the uh, uh, zone of light that was in that space was oatmeal at this point because of all the moisture penetrations that had gone through the cells of those blocks. And there was going to be, uh, to, to add our value to the exterior finish, they were going to do a full EPIS. So I wasn't sure what, what happened to that, uh, that piece. I know we the one time we had some reserves that were being built up towards the payment of that, that work. But, uh, so that would be a question, uh, with respect to the new dressing rooms, uh, the four dressing rooms that are there currently are there sort of by accident. There actually were two dressing rooms that, needed to be turned into four. And ultimately, the way the uh, dress rooms work with visitors is very uh, conflict oriented because you have to go through the same set of doors in and out after games and before games. Uh, you know, the uh, chiefs had, uh, had access requests that they would go through the old Zamboni room and they'd have their own dress room at the one end, which was their equipment room also. So that they also didn't have to you know, walk in in and out of that same corridor as the competitor, whoever that might be. And there was a design to put two dressing rooms at the back end, which would be the south end of the rink, you know, so that you had access through the back next to the Zamboni gate. Uh, so there was that access, Chief's access, and then the two dressing rooms would would revert back to the two dressing rooms, which are currently four. So just some some thoughts on that. There were some thoughts about the uh, uh, confectionery, concession area. You know, it's got a, a crush space problem, always has, because it used to be upstairs uh, next to the, uh, sorry, next to the, next to the dance floor area, the dance room area. And so that, that space used to be the kitchen. And, and then you had the dance floor used to be the cafeteria. And if you see where the murals are, currently they're actually fill-ins the block was filled in. There used to be windows that over, you could oversee the, uh, the hockey games from that space. So there was talk, well, we'll just flip that back to the way it was. So all this design work has been done. I'm just wondering if, if, if any of that's in play here, or is it strictly, we're, we're going to dress up what we already have. And, and I'm hoping that we're going to fix some of the problems we have with that uh, corridor arrangement, dressing room arrangement. Um, and the only other thing I got is, is we had a compressor, a hundred ton compressor that we had pickled out of uh, the Mayfield Inn. It, it was only two years old at the time when we had it uh, as a per purchase of all the other equipment that we pulled out of the Mayfield. And I know it went to the Broussards. I believe was, uh, I believe that's the name. Anyway, it went to a, a cooling company that uh, was gonna pickle it and put it on a shelf. And when we need it, they were gonna bring it in. So I just wondered what happened to, to that equipment. So be, those would be my questions. Mr. Michael? Uh, with regards to the specific uh, construction and plans with that, I'd defer to the Director of Operations if she's on the call. Hi, yeah. I'm here. Can you hear me? It's Jennifer. Um, all, all, of the or all of the items that you listed, Councillor Hendricks, um, we can incorporate those 
as we go through the design specs and things like that, as far as fixing the current issues. Um, as far as the uh, compressor that you mentioned, I'll have to investigate. That will be something I'll have to look into. I'm not aware of that, but we will look at that. Okay, and I'd be happy to assist if, if need be with the, uh, the history on that. Um, when the Mayfield Inn closed its doors and to its arena package, it had a twin arena package in the back. Uh, Beaumont and Beaumont Amateur Hockey has stepped up, uh, spent about $20,000. And we got all the rink boards, the plexi, uh, we got all the equipment that came with it, including the 100 ton unit. Uh, the 100 ton unit was state of the art at that time. It was only about two years old when uh, the, the current owner, Mr. Owen, or the previous owner, Mr. Owen, had decided he was going to get out of this, out of hockey, and turn it back into a, a tennis court, which is what it was prior to that. So all that stuff got pickled, shelved, put away. We, we reused a lot of it. Uh, a lot of the puck board was used on Brack One when it had to be re referred, refinished. Uh, but uh, that particular unit has gone somewhere, and it would be nice if uh, we had access to it. So thank you. Councillor Danlock. Thank you, followed Your Worship. By, sorry, followed by Councillor Stout and Councillor Van Newkirk. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr. Blanco, for your presentation and the package before us today. I think this is actually a really good use and prudent use of these capital dollars for a long-term project that'll extend the life of the facility by almost 30 years. That's that's awesome. In the list of specifications, I'm wondering if, um, based on your previous answer, uh, if this is a, a steadfast list or are the ice plants being considered for replacement at this point as well? I know we mentioned voter systems, but that tells me more of a heating system than the ice plants for the two rinks. Could that be considered part of the project if you wanted it to? Or it has to be specified before the application goes in if we want to look at the ice plants as part of the package. Thank you. Mr. Michael? Uh, through your worship to Councillor Daniluk, uh, the ice plants are encompassed in the plan for the application. Councillor Stout. Thank you, Worship. Um, Councillor Daniluk just asked the question I was going to ask, so I'll ask another one. Um, um, when we were discussing the ineligible projects, um, there was um, discussion, uh, there was a proposal for an expanded library program space in the uh, Parks and Recreation Master Plan that Council adopted in December last year. Um, I'm Because that was included in a, a proposed capital plan, I'm assuming that would be a project that, that wouldn't be eligible for this kind of funding. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Stout, if it was within the capital plan for 2020 or 2021, it would could be deemed that this pro that project could have gone forward in either of these years and then would be ineligible for that reason. In the specific instance you brought up, it would be likely that uh, that would increase operating costs and might result in a municipal tax increase, which would be another reason why that would deem it an ineligible project. Okay, so that one would be ineligible and well, we, we believe it might be at least. For the That's purposes correct. of this application. Yes. Okay, thank you. And yes, I'd noticed that there's no, um, there's no, there's no specific mention of ice plant in here. And I was going to ask you the same question is, but it is included? Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Councillor Van Newkirk. Yeah, thank you. A um, couple of bigger picture questions, I guess, to start. Um, can you tell, uh, through your worship to the presenter, can you tell me what other projects were considered as you created this recommendation? I guess that'd be my first question. Sure. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Van Newkirk, the other projects that we considered as admin were some 5G infrastructure in the Centreville area, a downtown park in Sanitaf, as well as uh, 50th Street storm main replacement. Follow up. Yep. Um, I actually like the sounds of a couple of those projects better than the one that's in front of us. <laughs> um, so where, where my next comment is going is that, uh, I'll, I'll phrase it as a question though, like how can we use this program to create projects that are more public facing? I know that uh, the Ken Nickel needs um, a lot of improvement and the things that have been put you know, forward here are all deserving things. Um, Consequently, we're fresh out of a meeting where we just put uh, $3.5 million in reserve for building um, issues or building needs that are beyond a budget. And we're also through a, or about to enter a budget cycle where I'm anticipating we were going to spend some money in that facility anyways. And I don't know that, I'm just anticipating that. So 
Um, maybe some comments on how we might be able to uh, move around some of these funds to get a little bit of a better spread in the community rather than just all focused on one facility. Um, my final comment is, is I know that's hard because if the criteria of increasing operational um, needs potentially meaning a tax increase, I know I know that makes it hard, but maybe you could speak to some some ways that we could make this stuff more public facing and spread it around a bit in the community rather than just burying it into the facility. Thank you. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Van Newkirk, we considered all these items and the big theme that we came out with is that growth projects that might be more public facing are going to increase uh, operating costs. The province's criteria for the program are pretty specific on uh, investing dollars in infrastructure, things like roads, utilities, existing infrastructure to maintain jobs. So we evaluated all that when we uh, went through our list of unfunded shovel ready projects and determined that this was probably the number one uh, project that we could, could put forward that would hit all the criteria that was listed in the program guidelines. That's good for now, thank you. Councilor Margot Swain. Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. Um, Mr. DeBlanc, I wonder if you could just explain a little bit more, and I, try, I read the report, but it, it's not terribly clear when you, when you say no, no larger impact to, to, state, uh, to municipal tax. I mean, you could argue that the kinder cool by, by doing that, I see you're, you're reducing it with, with some energy rates and that sort of stuff, but um, you know, that, that potentially could in increase usage, but things like a, a, a downtown park, you know, are you saying, you know, if this was fully funded by this, he's saying from an operational perspective to quote unquote maintain that, that would then increase the, the sorry, I guess my question is, 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 have we checked on that interpretation? I, I find it very hard that, you know, someone like a, you know, going looking, looking at some of these cities have, you know, multi millions of dollars that they're going to be able to develop a project that that doesn't have that type of small operational impact. Any anything we do is going to um, is going to result in that. So, I guess uh, I'm not challenging, but I'm just questioning the the sense that you know something as small as is building a park or, or is going to because technically we've got a small uh, additional piece to operate that that would be discounted. So. I guess your thoughts on that analysis, if you could expand on that. Uh, sure, through your worship to, to Councillor Munkoff. So when, when considering uh, specifically the park, uh, there is the component that it, having an additional park space would increase operating costs there. So there's a concern that we submit this project and it gets uh, rejected. Uh, the province was, and municipal affairs was explicit that we should be submitting projects that clearly meet the criteria and avoid submitting gray area projects. Some of the projects we considered were considered gray area projects, whereas this one was specifically meets all the criteria that they've laid out. Um, doesn't increase operating costs. In fact, it reduces operating costs. So it meant going through these criteria established that this would likely be the best use of the dollars. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Sorry if I can, yeah, go ahead. can carry it down, down this theme. Um, so I guess the I guess I'm trying to understand, and let me be clear. I, I think you know putting a portion of this to the to the Ken Nickel make, makes sense. Um, great great opportunity to use that. Um, but but I'm wondering if there are other other key things that I know we're trying to get in the community. We've talked about before, and and you know that downtown park is, is something. So I guess what's what's the risk? Let let's say we, and I'm just throwing out numbers here, to, but you know let's say we allocate. 80% of the cost towards the chemical and, and try 20% for the downtown park or the cenotaph that we've talked about before, you know, the, the rest of they come back and say, no, then do we quote unquote lose that? Or, or do we, can we reallocate that 20%? Have you had those type of conversations? What happens if they quote unquote reject a project? Uh, so in conversation with municipal affairs, the risk would be that we do lose the funds. So in utilizing it for this specific project, other funds, be it reserve or our, our grants, would be available through the uh, the budget process. What this does is effectively moves this project, which would likely be on the capital plan for a 2023 or 2024 year forward, and then frees up some reserve funds in the future. 
Yeah, so if I'm interpreting your report, it's basically, this is a no-brainer, get this done, and then we can we can worry about other projects through the budget process. Um, is that a fair assessment? Maybe my language, but... <laughs> uh, I would say that's a fair assessment. Yeah, okay, and and I really appreciate your explanation. I, I, was, I was coming here with, with all these excited ideas and, and um, crazy ideas in my own mind, but... Um, you, you've convinced me to, to to park those until we get into budget. So I, I'm good with what's in front of us here. Um, thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, it's it's a great project. It was, as you said, it advances it a couple of years. It's also very in keeping with this council's mission to improve our recreational amenities. And this building is in is in desperate need of some upgrades. And and some of the things that Councillor Hendricks talked about would be awesome additions. So I hope they get taken care of in this project. And so at this point, I'm prepared to move that council accept this report as administration or <laughs> accept this report as information and direct administration to submit an application to municipal affairs to obtain the MSP funding approval for the Ken Neko Regional Recreation Center Re Revitalization Project. Discussion on the motion. Councillor Van Newkirk. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> I'm just wondering the, the process that can be used here to make sure that um, uh, a bunch of the knowledge that Councillor Hendricks shared around some of the needs of this facility are, are considered. Um, how, how are we going to have that assurance that those ideas and thoughts are going to be considered as we move forward? Um, I also want to I also want to point out that the timing on this is really tough. Um, the uh, basically tomorrow you're putting this document in and submitting it for October 1st. Um, you know, I know administration has had a lot on their plate, but um, probably we could have shoehorned this in before. It does feel to me a little bit tonight, like we're making a, a decision um, under a very tight timeline and take it or leave it is how I kind of feel. Um, I wish and hope that there would have been some interpretation for Gary, but you've, you've explained that that's not possible. So I, I accept that, but you know, so I guess uh, how do we ensure those ideas are forward and just an acknowledgement of the, the tight timeline here. Thank you. Mr. Michael. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Van Newkirk, we can track all of what uh, Councillor Hendricks has explained through our asset management system. Um, if the Director of Operations wants to add more to that, we can, but we'll take everything that we've heard tonight and investigate it and make sure it's in, involved in this project. Okay. Further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, call the question. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time tonight, Mr. Blanco. Which brings us to item 3B, the Duke and District Regional Waste Management Authority Organics Contamination Reduction Strategy. Mr. Wong. Good evening, Council. Um, I'm here to, uh, not to present, but the, um, just, just to let you aware that the, the Duke and District Regional Waste Management Authority at the last meeting, they had a presentations about the organic contamination reduction strategy, and the information is uh, included in the council package. Uh, and I'm here to happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, Mr. Wong. So, open it up to comments from members of council. Councillor Stoke, do you want to? Mr. Rep, did you want to weigh in on this? Thank you, Worship. I, I don't have a lot um, to add to what, as what is in the presentation. Um, this was presented at the last Lidocan District Regional Waste Management Authority meeting um, last week. Um, uh, so I, 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 can, I may also be able to answer some of your questions. As, um, although I'll defer to Ms. Carson, Ms. Carson or Mr. Wong as, um, as available. Um, the basic problem is, that as, as you see, that um, we're going to have to implement some kind of, of um, inspection or education programs to ensure that people aren't contaminating either accidentally or deliberately the um, household waste so that it can be successfully composted um, instead of going into the landfill. Um, there are some implications that the authority is proposing to bear most of the cost of the education and inspection effort currently, although there is a small financial cost to the municipality, which to Beaumont, which is one of the reasons that I brought this up 
and asked for this to be brought forward to council. Um, and my feeling is that there may be further costs down the road if we have to move to a more rigorous inspection program and with the possibility of refusal to collect some loads if they are deemed to be contaminated. Uh, costs both in terms of, of financial for doing for doing that and also possibly political as people become upset that their um, their loads are being refused. Um, so I wanted you all to be aware of it. <laughs> I appreciate that, Councillor. So tonight's mo mostly just to bring this for a first look to our attention that we might have to allocate some funds or do some educational stuff down the road here. Yes. How soon is the the authority looking at doing some of this stuff? Oh, well, this this starts pretty much right away. Um, certainly in the new year. Okay. No, I'm I'm all in favor of doing an educational piece. I mean, if it keeps our tonnage our tipping fees down, um, that would be awesome. Councilor Newkirk, question. Yeah, just uh, more of a comment than anything. Uh, thanks to Councilor Stout for bringing this forward for for awareness. I think it's. It's important. Um, I can remember not too long ago in Chambers, there was um, a resident in who had followed garbage trucks around to figure out who goes where and what loads go where and, and this and that. And uh, contaminated loads are a big concern because, you know, what is supposed to go to one place, if it's contaminated, now can't go there anymore and it has to go somewhere else. And that somewhere else is in the landfill rather than in the compost pile or the recycle bin. So thanks for bringing that forward. Um, my, my thoughts on this are that this doesn't improve until there is a, uh, a more robust uh, inspection system in place. And uh, I suggest that that will be a municipally borne cost in the future by increasing resources, um, you know, likely in the summertime through a summer student or something to do those inspections and put those stickers on bins and um, start refusal of pickup for those people who um, uh, obviously are throwing bags of garbage in a bin. So, you know, the costs may not be presented in this document, but I foresee in the future that the costs for the municipality will increase to decrease this problem because we're going to have to put more resources at it. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's going to be a pertinent cost um, come uh, budget budget time or not, but maybe something for administration to think about considering or to consider or think about as we talk about service levels. Um, I would it would be tough to swallow a um, a resource request increase partway through the year last or next year if we could have anticipated that need at budget time. So that's all I have. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate your comments, Councillor, and I sort of echo them. So I'm going to put the challenge back to our administration to uh, not let this fall off the radar. And if there's going to be budget impacts for us to work closely with the authority to determine what they may be and then have them for us at budget. Is that fair? Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Further questions or comments from members of council? Okay, seeing none, I will move that we accept uh, this report as information and move on from there. All the discussion on the motion. All in favor? That carries unanimously. I'd like to thank council for their time this evening. We have no items in our closed session, but I'd like to thank council administration for their time this evening to consider these two important matters. Uh, I know this is normally an off day for us, so thank you for coming in. And at this point, we will declare the, the meeting adjourned.